want us to go into the book of Romans. Nataka tukaingia katika kitabu cha Warumi. And uh, as we go into the book of Romans. Tunapoingia katika kitabu cha Warumi. Romans has been said to be the gospel that we have received we as Gentiles. Ah, Warumi inasemekana ni kwamba ni ile injili ambayo tulipokea kama sisi kama wa Yunani. I want me to say that the, the book of Romans is what breaks down the gospels, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and if you want even John. Kitambu cha Warumi ndio kinaweza kutuletea ile injili ambayo iko katika vitabu hivyo vingine barua za Paulo. So it breaks down into manageable pieces and to pieces that we can understand. Ina tu ina mega na kuvunja vunja ile injili ndio tukaweza kuielewa. When we talk about the gospel. Tunapoosema juu ya injili. When we talk about the gospel. Tunasema tunaposema juu ya injili. What exactly are we saying? Tunasema juu ya nini hasa? If somebody asked you today what is the gospel? Mungu akikuuliza injili mtu akikuuliza injili ni nini? What is your answer? Utaweza kumjibu namna gani? Because we have no much time to to listen to all of us. Na kwa sababu hatuna wakati mwingi wa kusikiliza sisi wote. Please carry my definition of what the gospel is. Ah, uh, chukua ile uh, maelezo yangu ya kusema injini ni nini. That the gospel is the message that we have received about Jesus Christ being born. Ya kwamba injili ni ile ujumbe ambao tumepokea kuhusu Yesu kuzaliwa kwake. His life and the the, the ministry that he did. Maisha yake na uh, kazi yake. His death on the cross and the resurrection. Ah, uh, kufa msalabani na kufufuka and that the fact that he died and resurrected he is coming back again and na vile alikufa na kufufuka ya kwamba anarudi tena so when when you ask what is the gospel what is this good news when people ask you what's the gospel people say it's a good news so what's a good news the good news is that there is a man who came he was born he died and he rose again and he has promised that he is coming habari jamaa ni kusema ya kwamba alizaliwa na kufa na akafufuka na anarudi tena if that missed out in scripture so in the bible kama hiyo haingekuwa katika neno la bwana then this book will just be another book of of good collections of good writings basi biblia ingekuwa tu kama kitabu kingine chochote ambacho ni cha mambo mazuri and so when we look at the gospel tunaposangalia angalia habari jema when we look at jesus christ coming tukiangalia yesu akirudi his dying on the cross kufa kwake msalabani his resurrection kula kufufuka kwake and the promise that he is coming back na ile ahidi ya kwamba anarudi tena then we can interpret that in our lives today yes tunaweza tafsiri haya katika maisha yetu maisha see where, see where we are in this grand uh, picture of things tukaangalia tuko mahali pagani katika hii picha yote and what that means for us na hii ni kumaanisha nini maisha ni mwetu looking at scriptures the book that allows us to get into that space is the book of romans ah kitabu cha warumi ndio kinatusaidia kuweza kuangalia na kuelewa haya maneno the book of romans of course written by apostle paul ah kitabu kiliandikwa na mtume paulo and it is recorded that he wrote it about 15 57 58 ad iliweza kuandikwa katika huo mwaka wa Um, 57 AD Yes uh 57 58 AD uh it's believed that's when it was written 57 58 AD And and Paul writes to us Na Paulo anatuandikia And as he writes he's in a place that we think or believe is Corinth Na anatuandikia tunaamini kwamba alikuwa mahali panaitwa wa Corinth Why do we think he's in Corinth Tunafikiria kwa nini yako Corinth Because within the scriptures in the book of Romans chapter number 16 Katika sura ya 16 uh, and, and verse number 23 Um study wa uh, 23 as he is writing the book of Romans Anapoandika kitabu cha Warumi which is what we have here he says Gaius my host Anasema Gaio uh, I'm the host of the whole church Ah uh, Gaio mwenyeji wangu na yule mwenyeji wa kanisa lote Greets you Anawasalimia Erastus the treasurer of the city Arasta mweka hazina was... and, and he continues to name the people who are in the church in Corinth Anaendelea kusema watu wale ambao walikuwa katika kanisa la wa Corinth so as I pen this letter these guys are sending because they are here with me they are sending their greetings so, ah. so we conclude that he is in Corinth Anasema ya kwamba ninapoandika mbaliwa hii hao watu wanatuma salamu zako kwa hivyo tunasema ako Corinth But the people to whom this letter was addressed was the church in Rome Alikuwa ametuma hii barua kwa kanisa ambalo lilikuwa katika Roma And so the first recipients as Paul is writing in his mind he's thinking about the Roman church Anapoandika anafikiria kanisa ambalo lilikuwa katika Roma Says in verse number uh, chapter number 1 verse number 7 to 8 Sura ya kwanza mstari wa 7 na 8 Says to all who are in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ 
continues to say, first, I thank God, verse number eight, I thank God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. So he's addressing the church in Rome. And, and I'm just giving this information as some background information so that we, we will get into what we need to share this morning. It is recorded that the church in Rome was not like the other churches that Paul had written to because as Paul wrote, he wrote to address an issue that was happening in the church or something that needed to be addressed or even a doctrine that was being uh, peddled then that was not right. For example, if you think about the church in Corinth, which is recorded that there was, there was a lot of godlessness and immorality that was happening. And so Paul decided I want to address this issue. The church in Rome is a bit different. Verse number 16, uh, verse number 19 of chapter number 16 says, talking about the church in Rome, he says, for your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I'm glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good. And simple concerning evil. So the church in Rome has, has some good report. They are, they are spoken well of. He says they are obedient. And because he had heard about them, he longed to go and minister to them. And so he's writing before he goes to uh, visit the church in Rome. Chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, tells us that he longed to go and visit uh, the church in Rome says, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. And so he's saying, Together with the good things that have been said about you, I want to come so that I can teach you something that will help you in uh, this walk of life. The theme that is in this book that we are reading. In fact, let me even say, that if you wanted to give um, a topic to the sharing of today, you want to call it the witnessing through the book of Rome. Through the and witnessing through the book of Romans will help us to know how we can share Christ. The witnessing that I'm talking about here could be ambiguous if you're thinking about witnessing through Romans. One, you can use the book of Romans to witness to your friends relatives and whoever else. But also that you are witnessing what God has done for you and for me. So whichever you pick will be good. I am one person who knows that when we go out to witness or when you meet somebody and you want, you're feeling, you know, God wants me to witness to this person. At times you don't know what to say. We don't know how to start. We know we need to witness. And as we continue arguing within ourselves, the opportunity that we had with this person goes. I don't know how many of us, many times you've been in the vehicle and you're thinking, 
the anointed servant of God that I am, I'm going to witness to this person. And you are set when you got into the vehicle at, uh, at, at the cooperative stage. You prepare yourself and say, when the vehicle starts, it will start. And then you, you, you are there, you don't know what to say and how to start. Oh, the adventure this person answer. has had a bad night and you're thinking, where? Ah, to Kifika, super highway, to Ingeku, around about Iri, to Eleke Town. That's where I'll start. Nikifika pale, katika njia kundi, yoni taanza kumushudia. And you keep postponing doing it because you don't know what to do and what to say na, until na, you get to town and say, maybe the Lord didn't want me to talk to them. Na mwafika town, jijini, ukio ujafanya hivyo na unasema pengine, mungu hafu anataka ni mshudia. So we'll look at how we can witness using the book of Romans. Tunaangalia vile, tunaweza kushudia kupitia kitabu cha warumi. And, and we are also witnesses of the same what God has done done for us. So scripture says in uh, uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 16 to 17 which is I think the key scripture in uh, these first three chapters. Says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes says for the Jew first and also for the Greeks for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written Kama vile kumeandikwa, the just shall live by faith. Now just hold it there. Shika pale. Every one of us seated in this place. Ambaye, kila ambaye hapa. We have achieved a lot. We have a lot that is coming after our name. Kuna mengi ambayo we did this, we did the other, Tulifanya we have this, hili, we went to this lile. place. We, we have... na mahali fulani. The only reason that we have to be able to say that is because the just shall live by faith. It is not because of the great things that you have done. It is not because of the great achievements that you have. It is not because of the education that you have. We are living and we are justified by faith. We are justified by faith. And, and this is what this book is all about. When we were sharing the, 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 the Lord's table, the Holy Communion, just being reminded that were it not for Jesus dying on the cross, that we wouldn't be found today. Were it not for the sacrifice of Jesus, none of us would stand. So we are here appreciating the fact that it is by faith we are here. We live. We are righteous. By faith, not because of what we did. And so Paul comes to us as he writes to the, to, to the Roman church. Because he wants to impact the church in Rome. So that together with them being obedient. Because then, then they were placed, they were very... Rome then was very, very important. In the, in the world that was known then. Rome was important. Rome was a superpower. If you know any superpowers, Rome was one. And so Paul wanted to go there and impart the gifts of God and and, 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 and affect the church in Rome. And because it was important. Anybody who wants to come to, to, the, to the nation of Kenya and do whatever it is they want to do, if they are able to get Nairobi, I can assure you, 
anaweza kukuhakikishia they will have an easy time getting into those other places atakuwa na wakati rahisi sana kupenya mahali kule kingine pokote paul is thinking this way kwa sababu paul anafikiria hivi so this brings us to a reading in the book of romans chapter number 1 Uh, tunasoma uh, andiko letu pale Warumi sura ya kwanza I want to read verse number uh, 14 Nasoma mstari wa 14 I'll read through to 32 Mpaka mstari wa 32 What these verses are trying to show us Zile andiko zinaanza kutuelezea is the fallenness of men ya kwamba uh, kuchonyesha vile binadamu ameanguka the depravity of men kama vile binadamu amepungukiwa the lostness of men kama vile tumepotea kama binadamu without god bila mungu and so the first three chapters of the book of romans uh, kwa hivyo sura tatu za kwanza would be addressing the fallenness of men ilikuwa inaangazia vile the hopelessness of men vile binadamu amekosa tumaini the need for men to receive jesus christ uh, kama vile binadamu anahitaji kupokea Yesu. So this is a very very important lesson from the book of Romans. Kwa hivyo hii ni somo kubwa sana katika kitabu cha Warumi. So it says in verse number 14 if you read uh, from uh, verse number 1 you will find uh, Paul introducing himself and then comes to verse number 14 and it says I am a debtor both to Greeks and to the barbarians both to wise and to unwise. It says verse 15 so as much as is in me I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also it says verse 16 for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god to salvation for everyone who believes for the jew first and also for the greek for in the righteousness for in it the righteousness of god is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and godliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of god is manifest in them for god has shown it to them verse 26 for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse because although they knew god they did not glorify him now Paul getting into uh, describe uh, the, the people they did not glorify him as god no were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened professing to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible god into an image made like corruptible men and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things that tells us that there were people who were fashioning idols and that is what he describes there uh, verse number 24 therefore god also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves continues to say in verse 25 who changed the truth of god for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever amen for this reason god gave them up to vile passions for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature likewise also the men this sounds like kenya leaving the natural use of the women burned in their lusts for one another men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which is due and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting it says verse 29 being filled with all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder strife deceit evil mindedness they are whisperers backbiters haters of god violent proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents undiscerning untrustworthy 
and loving and forgiving and merciful. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving death, deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Now, those are the things that were happening. And Paul is saying that these people, they need to know that the wrath of God is coming. And so he takes us through that and we see our lostness. For, for a moment, I think we would go ticking that list of the things that have been said and, and we're asking ourselves if we went and ticked, would that be true of our society today? And without exception, every one of them would go ticking. Murderers, idolaters, immorality, sexual immorality. And all the, give, give, give it to us, give, give us... That uh, verse again. So so that when, when we are looking at it, we are not just saying, he spoke to the Romans. He wrote, he's writing to us today. Do, do we have unrighteous people today? Do we have people who are sexually immoral? Do we have wickedness today? People who are covetous. People who are malicious. Who have envy and our murderers and they strike do we have Wa whisperers amongst us Wale verse number 30 Mstari kumina, theradini na, theradini. Back, backbiters Wale wa have, Wale. You, have you spoken to people and they tell you I know I'm a good person when, when, you go, when you go witnessing or when you're sharing it out with other people because we know that this is the power of God unto salvation when you're sharing it out with people do you find people who say me I'm not a bad person so I'm, no, I'm not in need of God I pray that when you get to this kind of a person please leave them, don't waste your time because you'll get into arguments and arguments. And we have not been called into arguments. But you will, out and, you will go out and witness to somebody. And as you're speaking to them about the love of God, they are, they are acquiescing. They are, they, are, they are agreeing with what you're saying. And we get to that place where you ask the the million dollar question. Do you want to receive Jesus? In, in fact, when you have been with this kind of a person, you don't wait for them. You, ask, you actually tell them you want to receive Jesus. And then they say yes. And together with them, this is what we do. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I confess I am a sinner who needs to be forgiven. And we do it. I do it. You ought to do it. That we go to God and say we are those people and so we need to be forgiven. We confess our sins every moment that you have an opportunity to bring somebody to the Lord. The book of Romans reminds us that we are sinful. None of us is good. I am not saying you're not born again. Saying you have no place to say I am a good person. We can only say that because of the grace of God and the fact that God has justified us. And the book of Romans Paul is writing to us as he writes to the people in Rome telling us it is by the grace of God and not for whatever you have done. And you can read through to chapter number 3 up to verse number 20. And I want to get into my first point how we are going to go out there to witness to people who need to know Jesus Christ because we know this that we have received is the power of God unto salvation. The book of Romans chapter number 3 verse 23. After we go through chapter number 1, 2, 3 up to verse number 23, 
The conclusion of the matter is, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It Ina, does not leave out any one of us. So all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And you know that pricks the heart of man. Hiyo ina shinda moyo wa Bwana. Realize that we are the we, we, we are the greatest of sinners. Tunatambua ya kwamba sisi ni wenye dhambi waku. And sinners have a need to be forgiven. Na wenye dhambi wanastahili wanahitaji kusamehewa. As a sinner I need to be forgiven. Kama mwenye dhambi mimi nastahili kusamehewa. It is a need that I have. Mimi niko na hitaji la kusamehewa. It is a need that those people out there have. Ni kuna hitaji wako nalo hao watu wako pale. They might not say it. Wanaweza kosa kusema. They might not look it. Waha wanaweza kosa kuwa kaka. But deep kama. down in their hearts that is a need that the person who is not with Jesus is crying out for. Lakini kilindini cha moyo wao wanaitisha na wanahitaji kusamehewa. As a man will always be in need of forgiveness. Kama binadamu kila wakati tunahitaji kusamehewa. And this is the position of all of us. Na hii ndio hali ya kila mmoja wetu. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory. Ah, warumi 3 mstari wa 23. We have fallen short of God's standards. Tumepungukiwa na maagizo ya Mungu. And so this is the, this is God's greatest gift to men that he has forgiven us. If you're in the house and you can stand and say I have been forgiven, then you have received the greatest gift that God can give to men. Kama uko katika nyumba hili na unasema ya kwamba mimi nimesamehewa, basi umepokea kipawa cha Mungu. And because you have received it, then you need to go out there and give it out to other people. Na kwa sababu umepokea kile kipawa unastahili kwenda pale ukaweze kushiriki na wengine. I know as human beings there is a debate that always happens in our hearts. Kama binadamu kuna ile majadiliano. And those that are not born again. Asa hasa kwa wale ambao hajaokoka. And you know the thinking that the, we keep having if adventure if this thing is true what will happen tuko na mawazo tukitiliza today what will happen if, if this god they have talked about is true i want to submit to us that this is true nataka kuamwia kwamba hili jambo ni la kweli if you had any doubts kama ulikuwa na shauku you had better give your life to jesus then start working on your doubts afadhali utoe maisha yako kwa yesu alafu endelee kushughulikia shauku yako shaka yako because it is true kwa sababu ni kweli in the you are if it is true kama kusema kama becomes true ah uh, ikiwa ni kweli scripture says that after that it is eternal damnation biblia inasema ya kwamba baadaye ni hukumu ya mwisho and so we bring us to that place where we know all of us have sinned number 2 uh, ah ndokezo la pili romans chapter number 5 and verse number 8 warumi 5 mstari wa 8 It says but God demonstrates. Ya kwamba Mungu anadhihirisha. The other day we were taken through that word but. Ah uh, siku hiyo nyingine tulifundisha juu ya ile neno la kusema lakini. We were told when but comes in. Ya kwamba lakini ikija all that had been said. Ah uh, yale yote ambayo yalikuwa yamesemwa at that point. Ah uh, wakati huo things change. Mambo yanabadilika. And so we have seen our fallenness. Sisi tumeona kupungupungu kwetu. Paul wetu. goes into details to describe the fallenness of man and what uh, man is. Paul anaelezea yale upungufu fungufu. But we get to chapter number 5. Tukifika katika sura ya 5. This but God demonstrates his own love towards us. Ya kwamba Mungu anadhihirisha upendo wake kwetu. In that while we were still sinners. Ya kwamba ya kati tulikuwa bado wenye dhambi. Christ died for us. Yesu alitufia that when we were still lost in sin wakati tulikuwa tumepotea katika dhambi when we were so ugly and nobody would have loved us wakati tulikuwa watu wabaya sana hakuna mtu angetupenda jesus christ went on the cross on our behalf yesu akaenda pale msalabani kwa niamba yetu this makes all the difference na hii kaleta mabadiliko that yote in that lostness of sin wakati tulikuwa tumepotea katika in dhambi that, in that state of depravity katika hiyo hali ya kupungukiwa he justified us akatuweka haki he went to the cross akaenda pale msalabani showing his great love for us akidhihirisha upendo wetu mkuu kwake god sent jesus christ to die for us yesu akatuma mungu akatuma yesu akatufie while we were yet sinners wakati tulikuwa bado wenye dhambi there is nothing that you had done hakuna kitu ulikuwa umefanya so that god would send christ on the cross to die for Ndiyo you. Mungu akatume Yesu akakufia msalabani. And so salvation that the salvation that we have received is not because we did 1 2 3 we just got it a gift of God by grace through faith. 
wa, uh, huo wokovu tumepokea tu kwa neema kupitia imani si kwa sababu tulitenda lolote lizuri and that changes the whole thing na hiyo inabadilisha kila kitu and so you are telling your friend unaambia rafiki yako as you are driving towards town ambapo ukiendesha gari kuelekea uh, that all of us have sinned ya kwamba sisi wote tumetenda ta na tumepungukiwa na utukufu wa Bwana that we are in need of forgiveness na tunahitaji kusamehewa when you go to chapter number 5 and verse number 8 na unaenda kwa sura ya 5 na mstari wa 8 and you tell them all that is true but god unaambia yale yote ni kweli lakini mungu he showed his great love for us alidhihirisha upendo wake wetu by sending jesus christ to die on the cross yesu akatufie pale msalabani number 3 dokezo la tatu Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23 wa Romans sita mstari wa 10 na 23 the wages of the sin that we have committed inatuambia juu ya adhambu and the truth of the matter here is if the wages of sin is death then uh, on the other side then we have eternal life that Christ gives kama malipo ya dhambi ni kifo basi tuko na kile kipawa cha Mungu ambacho ni So, ni uzima wa milele. Chapter 6 verse 23 says for the wages of sin is death. Kwamba malipo ya dhambi ni kifo. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lakini kipawa cha Mungu ni uzima wa milele. Wages of sin. Malipo ya dhambi sin has to be paid for. Ah uh, dhambi ni lazima ilipiwe. And it is paid for through death. Na inalipiwa kupitia mauti. And that debt has been paid by Jesus Christ. Na hiyo uh, deni imelipwa na Yesu. Every one of us that continues to receive the fact that Jesus Christ has paid for that sin through his death. Kila mmoja ambaye endelea kupokea uh, ile um, uh, imani ya kwamba Yesu ametulipia deni. Is in other words saying I want to pay for that sin through my death. Anas, kama yule anakataa anasema ya kwamba mimi nataka kulipia ile malipo kupitia kifo changu. And so you are refusing the eternal life that comes after. Unakataa uzima wa milele ambao unakuja kupitia Yesu Kristo. Friends, uh, marafiki. Sin is a killer. Ah, uh, dhambi ni mauti, inaleta mauti. Sin is a killer. Ah, uh, dhambi inaleta kifo. Sin will kill you. Ah, uh, dhambi itakuua. Sin has power to kill. Ah, uh, dhambi iko na nguvu ya kuua. Sin kills the best of friendships ah uh, dhambi inaua hata urafiki sin has killed marriages ah uh, dhambi imeua hata ndoa sin is killing relationships ah uh, dhambi inaua hata uh, ushirikiano sin has the capacity and 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 and, and, and ability to kill organizations ah uh, dhambi iko na nguvu uh, hata ya ku kusambaratisha churches hata kanisa nations even if you want at mataifa name it sin allowed sema in lolote. has a potential to kill dhambi ikiruhusiwa iko na nguvu ya kuua allow me to say this that niruhusu nikaseme scripture forbids sin ah uh, uh, maandiko yanakataza dhambi sin is forbidden ah uh, dhambi imekataliwa na maandiko and we don't we don't just we, we, sin is is forbidden not because of anything because sin is bad. Haijakataliwa kwa sababu nyingine yoyote lakini kwa sababu ni kitu mbaya. So sin is not bad because it's forbidden. Ah dhambi si mbaya kwa sababu imekataliwa. Can I say that again? Wacha nikaseme tena. Sin dhambi is not bad. Si mbaya because it has been forbidden. Kwa sababu imekatali imekatazwa. It is forbidden because it is bad. Imekatazwa kwa sababu ni kitu mbaya. Hello? Sin has been forbidden because it is bad. Ah dhambi imekatazwa kwa sababu ni kitu mbaya. And it kills. Na inaua. Is there anything that has been killed by sin and you identify this is because of sin? Kuna kitu ambacho unajua ya kwamba kimeua, kimekufa na unajua ni kwa sababu ya dhambi. But you know friends lakini marafiki every time look look at the sin that we commit uh, angalia, and how we commit it angalia dhambi ambazo tunatenda na tunatenda namna gani and we could go back to that list that we we got from uh, the scripture tunaweza enda kuangalia ile look at every one of them tunaenda kuangalia ile uh, mambo tumeambiwa pale sin is sweet ah uh, dhambi inakaa kama ni kitu kizuri sio inakaa sin is sweet dhambi ni kitu kitamu iko na utamu iko na utamu Uliza walevi wakiingia kwa bar ask the drunkards when they are getting to the bars you know you know when you go to the bar you you go there as an, an honorable man <laughs> ukienda pale kunywa pombe i am saying this because i know <laughs> unaenda pale kama mtu wa mungwana yes nasema you, like, yeah. kwa sababu najua and then you sit down unakaa vizuri you have one una, you have two 
unakunya kile by the time you are having the third one you are asking people is there any problem ukipa ukikunywa ya tatu sasa umeanza kuuliza watu kuna shida yoyote everybody becomes a friend kila mtu anakuwa rafiki yako say, have i ni nimekukosa kuna kitu tena you start asking have i wronged you in any way but by the time you are living there you are minus all your money ukitoka pale hauna lolote pesa yoyote you have done things that you if if you are told the following day it is you who was doing it you say ah ah it's not me uki umefanya mambo ambayo ukiambiwa siku hiyo nyingine ulikuwa unatenda hivi unasema si mimi how about backbiting na kusengenya watu when you have a story that nobody else knows ukiwa na hadithi ambayo hakuna mtu mwingine anaijua so sweet when you are telling it ni tamu sana ukieleza you look privileged that Unaka you have kama this mtu ameheshimika kama mtu uko na him um, ujumbe na when you're talking about that person and the other ukiongea juu ya huyo na yule mwingine and you don't have the facts na hata huna ukweli say have you heard unasema umesikia i see alifanya nini he did yeah. this every one of them kila mmoja is sweet when we are in, indulging in it kila dhambi iko na utamu wake but the bitterness of sin comes at the end when it has borne fruit lakini uchungu wake unakuja wakati imezaa matunda refuse to be found in that sin katika uh, kuba, kukataa kuingia katika dhambi number 4 ah uh, cha 4 dokezo la 4 book of romans chapter number 10 verse number 9 and 10 sura ya 10 We, we, we have worked with our person and we have told them our state uh, of, of of fallenness we have told them that god has come in and changed the whole situation we have actually told us that the wages of the sin that we are indulging in is eternal damnation but chapter number f- chapter number 10 and verse number 9 tells us how do we come to receiving this gift of god ah sura ya 10 inatuelezea kama vile mkakati ya kuweza kupokea if you confess with your mouth ya kwamba ukikiri na kwa mdomo wako lord jesus and believe in your heart ah yesu kristo na ukaamini katika moyo wako but god has raised him from the dead ya kwamba mungu alimfufua kutoka kwa wafu you will be saved utaokolewa and it is not just a simplistic saying na si kusema tu hivyo kawaida it is important for us to know ni, ni kwa muhimu tukaweze kujua that god has not left us to perish ya kwamba mungu hajatuacha tukaweze kuangamia he has not left us under his wrath hajatuacha kwenye ghadhabu yake he has provided a way ameweza kutupa njia he has provided a way ametupa njia ya kuokolewa If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved. Ukikiri kwa mdomo wako na kuamini katika moyo wako utaweza kuokolewa. For it is with your heart that you believe. Kwa sababu ni kwa moyo wako unaamini and are justified. Na unawekwa haki. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Na kwa mdomo wako unaweza kukiri imani yako. So we believe in our hearts by faith. Tunaamini katika mioyo yetu kwa imani all that God has done for us is true. Ya kwamba yale yote ambayo Mungu ametutendea ni kweli. From that point on we are justified. Kutoka hapo tunakuwa tumewekwa tumefanyika haki. Justification simply means that God treats us as if we never sinned just as if we never sinned. haki kuna maanisha kwamba Mungu anatuona kama hatujatenda dhambi. He us, he doesn't see the sin that has Akituangalia haoni dhambi that has separated us from him. Ya, ambayo imetutenganisha sisi na yeye. To, once we come to him by faith tukija kwake kwa imani he justifies us. Anatufanya wenye haki. Now justification comes from from justice. Kuta, kufanyika haki na kutoka kutoka we, we are going into into the into the legal uh, language tunaingia katika lugha ya ki justice <laughs> justification tuko kotini tunasema huyu mtu tuko ana haki tuko katika mahakama so ya inda... god justifies us mungu anatufanya wenye haki because of his son jesus christ kwa sababu ya mwana yesu because Christ. of what we have done si kwa sababu ya yale tumetenda or what we didn't do kama yale ama yale tu hatukufanya he is god na ni kwa sababu yeye ni so when we are justified he looks at us and he says this one is a saint kama tumewekwa haki anatuangalia anasema huyu and so you can look at your brother and your sister and call them saint uh, saint nancy unaweza angalia dada yako ama ndugu yako unamuita saint nancy we that were wicked and depraved in chapter number 1 and 2 wale ambao tulikuwa tumepungukiwa katika sura ya kwanza na ya pili when we get to chapter number 10 tunkifika sura ya 10 we become saints tunakuwa watu wa umini not because of anything that we have done si kwa sababu ya lolote tumefanya because we have believed in the only begotten son of god 
Lakini kwa sababu tumeamini yule tu mwana wa pekee wa Mungu. And that makes all the difference. Hiyo inaleta tofauti yoyote yote. I want to say here. Nataka kusema haya. That this is the reality of things as pertains Christianity. Hiyo ndio ukweli wa mambo kuhusu Ukristo. You have people who are full of joy not because of what they have but because they have Jesus Christ who gives joy in their hearts. You could be sick and you are dying but you have the joy of the Lord not because of the situation but because of who he is in your heart. Things might not be working out. Your husband might have walked away but you have the joy of the Lord not because you are happy about the situation but because you have Jesus Christ Now if we have received this. Kama tumepokea hii. Why don't we give it out to other people? Kwa nini hatupatiani watu wale wengine? If we have received this. Kama tumepokea hizi baraka. Witnesses of what God has done. Kama mashahidi haya yale Mungu amefanya. Why are we found crying and uh, we, 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 we go to a corner some place and we don't want to see the people who we call brothers and sisters who can help us through this journey and we start thinking oh god has forgotten me oh god hasn't been this oh god hasn't done that and then we become sick and by so doing we are negating the fact that we have received jesus christ and the work of god in our lives kwa nini tunaenda kama hali tunaanza kulia kujionea huruma badala ya kuenda kushiriki na wale wengine ambao wanaweza kutuhimiza na hiyo ni kumaanisha kwamba tumesahau ya kwamba tumepokea baraka na wakovu wa Yesu. If that is what happens when we give our lives to Jesus. Kama hayo ndio inatendeka wakati tunatoa maisha yetu kwa Yesu. Romans chapter number 10 and this is my last point. Ah uh, Warumi 10 na hii ndio ndokezo langu la mwisho. Verse number 11 to 13 says. Mstari wa 11 mpaka wa 13. We give us 11 through to 13. Ah uh, 11 mpaka 13. It says for the scripture says whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Mba mnaandika anasema kwamba yule yote anamwamini hata ataibishwa. Go back to verse number 11. Tukarudi mstari wa 11. Now when scripture says whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. I also look at the possibility of a shaming period that is coming. Minaangalia wakati wa kuaibisha wa kuaibika ambao ambao unaja. Yes, there is a time that people will be ashamed. Kuna wakati watu wataaibika. But you that has believed in Jesus Christ you have been saved from all this. Lakini wewe ambao umeamini Yesu Kristo umeotolewa katika kikundi hicho cha kuaibika believes in him inasema yeyote ambaye ameamini Yesu not be put to shame even Hut, in this life hutaibika hata katika haya maisha and in the life to come na hata maisha ambaye yanaja and even if it seems momentary like you're being put to shame na hata ikikaa kama wakati mwingine unawekwa katika him kwa sababu umeamini Yesu Kristo keep holding on to that word endelea kushikilia keep holding on to that word endelea kushikilia if we have believed in him we will need not to be put in shame kama tumemwamini hatuhitaji kuwekwa katika That is the word of God. He says anyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Give us verse number 12. Tupatie mstari wa 12. It says verse number 12 for there is no distinction. Kwa sababu hakuna tofauti between the Jew and the Greek. Kwa Wayahudi na Wagiriki. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Kwa sababu Bwana yule yule ndiye aliwaita wote. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Kwa sababu yule yeyote ambaye atalitia neno la jina la Mungu ataweza kuokolewa. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Yule yote ambaye atalitia jina la Bwana ataokolewa. Verse number 12 tells us there is no Jew there is no Greek. Mstari wa 12 nasema ya kwamba hakuna Wayahudi na hakuna Mgiriki. There is for there is no distinction. Hakuna tofauti yoyote. Talking about this that about the shaming and and receiving what God has done it says you will not there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. We need to get to that place where we believe and after we have believed then the Greeks the Jews and you know Jews are special people they are there's God has chosen them to God chose them to work out through Wayahudi. history what he wanted to show to men Wayahudi ni watu wa maalumu ambao Mungu aliwa waamua uh, wateua wakaweze kudhihirisha yale ambaye anatenda to show himself strong through the, the nation of Israel Alikuwa anataka kujionyesha nguvu zake kupitia Wayahudi But there were Greeks who were Gentiles. Lakini kulikuwa na wale wa Yunani ambao ni wa Giriki. And there was the Luya you. Na kulikuwa na ile Kikuyu you. Na Mukikuyu pale. The Luo you. Na Muluo pale. The Teso. 
na yule mtetsi the tiriki na tiriki the mijikenda wala mijikenda the masai na wala wa masai the luya na wala wa luya the kisi na wa kisi name the merians even wote wote na hata wa meru all of them are gentiles wote wote ni wa ya wa yunani when god is coming to give us this wa wakati Mungu anakuja kutupea hii we receive it together with those that God chose tunapokea pamoja na wale ambao watu ni maalumu wa Mungu wa Israeli we become partakers of the things of God tunakuwa washiriki katika mambo ya Mungu the Lord is Lord of all and Mungu. richly blesses all who call on him Mungu anabariki wote kwa sababu wote ambao wanalitia jina lake wataweza kuokolewa brothers and sisters ndugu na dada zangu what is it ni nini that has pushed you to a place and you cannot see god inakusukuma kwenye wakati na mahali ambapo huwezi ona mungu paul walks us through as witnesses of what god has done for us paulo anatuelezea yale mambo ambayo mungu ametutendea kama mashahidi and he calls us to go and be witnesses na anatuita tukaende kutukawe mashahidi are you here this morning uko hapa siku ya leo you're saying i am the, that person who is in chapter number 1 2 and 3. Unasema ya kwamba mimi ndiye yule mtu ambaye uko katika sura ya kwanza, mbili na tatu. In actual fact the list that we had uh, displayed right there. That describes me. Hiyo mambo ambayo tumeelezewa pale inasema ya kwamba hayo mambo yote ni mimi. You actually saying I'm all that and much more. Mimi niko na dhambi hizo zote na hata zaidi ya hizo. I am here to tell you that you have not sinned more than what God can forgive. Nataka kukwambia ya kwamba hujafanya dhambi kuzindi ile Mungu anaweza samehea. And I want us to make this prayer. Nataka tukaweze kusema hili ombi. We will pray all of us. Na sisi wote tutaomba pamoja. Knowing that none of us is good. Tukijua ya kwamba hakuna yeyote ambaye ni mwenye haki. All of us have fallen short of the glory. Kwa sababu sisi wote tumepungukiwa na utukufu wa Bwana. The Lord continues to do his work through us and in us. Na napo Mungu anaendelea kufutenda kazi yake kupitia sisi. We become partakers of the blessings of God. Tunakuwa washiriki katika baraka za Mungu. Even eternal life. Katika hata uzima wa milele. You want to say after me Lord Jesus. Sema baada. Say it loud Lord Jesus. Sema kwa sauti. I come to you this morning. I confess I'm a sinner who needs to be forgiven. This morning. Willingly. I give my life to you. Write my name in the book of life. I shall call you father. And you will call me son. And from this day onwards. I am born again. I am a heir of God's kingdom. Mimi ni mshiriki wa utukufu wa Bwana. I receive the promises of God of eternal life. Napokea ahadi ya Mungu ya uzima wa milele. I renounce the enemy. Natakataa adui. And every plan of the devil. Na mpango wote wa shetani. Every scheme of the evil one. Mpango wote wa shetani. Over my life. Pitia dhambi yangu. I renounce right now. Nakataa leo. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. And from today. Nakutoka leo. I am born again. Nimeokoka. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amina.